Eric Penner. I'm a contract administrator with Fort Gary Fire Trucks in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Today we're going to do the pump operations video on our Terminator, our Wildland Urban Interface model. What we've done with this particular model is we have added a custom step configuration to the truck. In doing so, we have covered the def tank and the fuel tank on the truck. So we've put a small lift up door for the fuel fill and the def fill. Moving again to the rear of the truck, we have added a slide master slide step for those that have difficulty getting to shelves in higher places. The unique feature of the Terminator are the speedlay locations. As opposed to putting a speedlay in a pump area, a cross lay on top of the pump house, this has been designed as a drawer system. This drawer will hold easily 200 feet of inch and a half hose and a nozzle. The hose is packed in the drawer and at deployment we simply open the drop door at the rear. Hose can be deployed by hand in as little as 15 seconds. We move now to the rear of the truck and we have a look at the unique pump compartment that we have on the Terminator. The Terminator is equipped with a Darley PSRH 1250 pump. It's driven through a primary Darley gear case through to a secondary Darley gear case that then drives the pump. On top of the gear case, Darley has added the high pressure pump section to that. In operation, the high pressure pump and the standard pressure pump both operate at the same time. We have incorporated unique features into the plumbing to ensure that both pumps are always wet, both pumps are always circulating water back and forth to prevent any overheat. As we start at the top of the panel, we have what looks like your standard pressure test ports, only in this case we have a third one labeled as high pressure. Below that we have the standard bypass and heat exchanger valves. As we come down, we have the first two and a half discharge, which is foam capable. We then have the first speed lay, which is the left side speed lay as foam capable operated through a KZ valve electric controller. As we continue to move right, we have discharge number two, which is water only. This truck has incorporated a bumper trash line. We use our standard class one push-pull control here. Moving across, we have both pump engaged and throttle ready lights above the FRC in control 400 governor. For safety purposes, we have incorporated the Darley pump overheat system. If, by all means that have been incorporated at present for keeping water in the pump and keeping water flowing, we still encounter a hot pump or a warm pump, then we have an overheat protection system that allows that over temperature water to be exhausted out to atmosphere and fresh cooler water drawn back into the pump. Moving across to the right, we have discharge number five, which is a two and a half inch hose bed discharge. Discharge number three, two and a half Darley valve, standard water discharge. Speed lay two, which is on the right side, curbside. Again, a KZ valve electric controller. And discharge four, another Darley valve, standard two and a half inch discharge water only. In the far corner that we will illustrate on a still photo are the foam level gauge and only foam controllers, the Foam Pro 2002 system. As we move back over to the left side of the pump, down a little lower, we have our standard Elkhart relief valve, which is fully adjustable for pressure settings. Next to that, we have a two and a half inch auxiliary suction with a standard lever control. Any other plumbing on the truck 
is drained, low points are taken care of. We utilize the class one quarter turn valves in these cases. Off the main intake of the pump, we have added a TFT piston intake relief valve with a side crank control. This allows the customer to work both from pressurized sources and from draft and control using both a draft supply of water as well as the tank water. Into the center section of the pump, at the bottom we have the control for the master drain, which is an air system. As we move up, we have again the KZ valves, both tank to pump and tank fill. Over to the right, we have the FRC water level gauge and the standard Darley primer control with instructions. As we look down into the bottom of the pump area on the right hand side, you'll see where the primer pump is located. Easy enough to get through for maintenance, easy to see if there's any issues going on if an operator happens to overheat the primer. Both sides of the pump enclosure in behind what we call L3 and R3, there is a removable panel. Looking through the opening, we see in the top the Foam Pro 2002 high pressure injection system as well as all the plumbing associated with this truck. The foam system strainer and drains are all here in this area. What you see here is the Darley high pressure pump section that feeds the bumper turret to the front and the hose reel that is on the right hand side of the truck which we saw in the inspection video. Moving down here what we have are the two chick sand swivels one left one right for the speed lay drawers. Now we're up in the cab of the M2 106 four-wheel drive terminator. The dash layout is very much the same as previous trucks and we have still photos that we're going to incorporate into the video. We're going to move down to the console controls. Here at the top, we have the pump engaged with a three light system. We have an OK to pump for pump and roll. We have an OK to pump for stationary pumping. We have a pump engaged light. We use a toggle switch to engage the PTO on the Allison transmission. Coming down on the left side, we have a bumper turret pressure gauge. We have a water level gauge next to it on the right. As we come down we have a KZ electric valve to control tank to pump operations. We have a KZ valve for tank fill operations. As we come back to the top and move down again we have the TFT bumper turret control and we'll come back to the switches there. Below that we have a Whalen Sencom siren control. We have installed a two-way radio for this particular customer. Below that, we have a remote on-off switch for the Foam Pro foam system. Next to that, we have a USB PowerPoint plug-in. And in fact, we have a total of three on this console. Next to that, we have a camera selector button and to the right of that we have a foam level gauge. As we move back to the top we have an air control drain for the turret plumbing. Now if we look back at the TFT joystick control, TFT has changed the joystick control in the last few years. So we still have the joystick control that gives us right, left, up and down controls. The toggle in the top is for straight stream fog application on the nozzle. As we look at the top of the control, we have a control for the flow valve that feeds the bumper turret. In the left position, it's set for trigger control, so it is operated only on the trigger on the joystick. In the valve open position, the valve is open at all times, full flow. There is also a valve closed position in the center. Coming down on the left side, 
we have a flow control potentiometer. This allows us to vary the opening of the valve in the plumbing and allows us a better stream in our flow. When we do the video for the pump and roll, we'll illustrate how changing this changes our pattern. At the top, we have an oscillate button. The TFT monitor can be controlled for an oscillate pattern and can be changed at any time. And on the right, we have a button for the monitor display. There is an option to add a fairly large monitor position display item. This particular customer has chosen the FRC Brigade 360 camera system. So we have four cameras incorporated into the vehicle that gives us a full 360 degree view of the truck at all times. As I indicated previously, the camera selector button on the console allows us to change views on the screen. So on the right hand side of the screen, we're now looking at a forward view through the system. That is a right hand view. We're back to the front. We're now a rear view. Secondary rear view. And a left side view. Back to the front. As the truck is moving down the road, the left side of the screen shows a complete 360 view of the truck. So we're going to walk through demonstration of how the foam system works on the truck. Now, as briefly mentioned before, the left hand speed lay, the number one speed lay, which is left side, driver side, is foam capable. This two and a half is foam capable. Those are the only two discharges that are foam capable on the truck. Once I have the pump in gear, I'm going to come back to the panel. I'm going to go to the bottom foam injection selector switch. I'm going to make sure that I have normal pressure discharge selected and my light is on. Then we come up to the top control, which is our main control panel for the foam probe. And I simply have to push the red button to start the foam system. Then I'm going to open number one speed leg and we have a fellow on the end of the line that is going to flow water and then we'll be able to give you a visual on foam flow through that hand line. Fortunately, I had water in the pump for purposes of the demonstration. Now what I'm going to do is open my intake valve and gain a prime out of the tank that we have in the floor.
talking the pump down now so that I can explain a couple of things that we've got going on and a couple of things that I did in the previous few seconds of the video. So you're going to notice on our intake that we've only got a small hose. This is a four inch stores. We have a four inch stores fitting on the TFT valve. It allowed us ease of a hose hook up this morning. In addition, I have 20 feet of hose. I have two 10 foot lengths hooked up and dropped into our in-ground tank. Putting two sections of hose into the suction reduces the amount of water that I can pull into the pump. So at a point, I reached almost a max flow based on what it was bringing in and discharging to two and a halves. So just some understanding there in terms of what happened and how we got it hooked up. If you had pressurized source here, that would not happen. If you were using a six inch to drop, that would not have happened either. You also saw me make a couple of moves with the tank to pump and the valve control. What I did is transition from draft to tank supply and from tank supply back to draft. It's, it's not difficult to do. Some people find it harder to do, but if it's done slowly, you've got a good consistent source available to you, it's not difficult at all. What we haven't discussed is the dual capability of the foam system. So you saw where we put the foam system into action for a normal pressure discharge. The system also has the capability of injecting foam into the high pressure side. The high pressure side of the pump is hooked to the bumper turret and the hose reel. We're going to shortly go out and do a demonstration on pump and roll using the bumper turret. If the department decides in their operational procedures that every time the truck goes out the door, they may use the bumper turret and they will probably use foam, then there's a switch that has to be set. So on the bottom of the panel, you have the foam selector switch. You saw where we had it in a normal operating position. Now I've switched it over to the high pressure side. That will allow us to start foam from the cab and flow foam out of the bumper turret. Before we do the actual driving demonstration for pump and roll, there's a few things I want to point out. Here on the right hand side of the dash are the two switches for the four wheel drive control. Four wheel drive controls are only changed when the vehicle is stopped, park brake is set. The vehicle has the capability of pumping both in two wheel drive and four wheel drive and in four wheel drive, both in high range and low range. Whenever the four wheel drive is engaged, you'll hear air solenoids get powered up behind the cab. On the dash, in the top right hand corner, you'll see an indication that the transfer case low range has been engaged. Now, once we start the truck, and go to drive, we get the second T-case engaged light. Both of those lights have to be engaged to know that four-wheel drive is fully engaged on the truck. Again, to switch out, neutral, park brake is set, switches are returned to normal position, the indicator lights are gone. With the combination of the transmission setup, the PTO setup, and the entire drive for the pump, we are able to do pump and roll in a full range of throttle application. We do not have to ride the brake. We do not have to watch the tachometer to ensure that we don't go over a given RPM. And you'll see that when we do the actual pump and roll. The other thing that you'll be able to see in the video at a point is what the 360 degree brigade camera gives us as we're moving down the road.
of the things that a lot of people ask questions about is where is my monitor? We talked about the fact that there was a monitor position indicator available. However, it has to be mounted on the console or on the dash somewhere. Eyes have to be on it as opposed to where the monitor nozzle is targeted in a ditch or on a fire line. The simplest thing to do is raise the monitor nozzle up. I'm going to rotate right and I'm going to lower it back down. I can just see it over the hood. Now I know where the nozzle is when I start my water flow. So now on to pump and roll demonstrations and what we're going to do first is run in four-wheel drive low range. So the park brake is set, transmission's in neutral. Again, I'm going to engage the range on the transfer case. I'm going to lock the transfer case. I have my one light indicator. My second light will come on once I go to drive. I'll leave the pump engagement for just a minute. All the drains are closed on our TFT joystick control. We're going to run the valve in the trigger control position so that I will only flow water when I pull the trigger. I'm going to leave the flow setting set about 50% and we'll see what we get for stream. We'll see what we get for turret pressure. So based on the assumption that we're running a dry pump and you're going to do a pump and roll exercise, I'm going to open my tank to pump all the way and I'm going to partially open my tank fill. I'm going to engage the pump shortly. So what I've done is allowed water into the pump I've allowed a means for the air to escape out of the pump and go back into the tank and we'll recirculate the water. The way the plumbing is done on the tank to pump, we have a drop, a physical drop from the tank down into the pump. It assists in making sure we get water to the pump. As you'll notice, we don't have a primer control in the cab. At such time as we need foam, I'm simply going to go down to the Foam Pro button and I'm going to remotely start the foam system. The foam system is currently set for high pressure discharge. One of the things I forgot to mention is the transmission gear that we pump in. When the park brake is released, pump's engaged, transmission is engaged in drive, we then physically scroll down to first gear. We always pump in first gear. in four-wheel drive low range with a top speed of approximately 10 kilometers an hour and we were running approximately 2200 rpm on the on the tachometer so we're running right up against the governor and again we can operate at any rpm between idle all the way to 2200 on our digital pressure gauge the turret pressure at the 50% setting on the flow for the turret, we achieved approximately 250 PSI. If this max flow is opened up all the way, we could achieve a pressure of something like 525 PSI. At that pressure, there's a little disturbance in the straight stream pattern and it gets a little wider. So that's why we prefer to run it about 50% of the way. I'm now gonna pump in two-wheel drive. I'm gonna open the valve up a little more. 
in two-wheel drive, we're going to run at approximately 20 kilometers an hour, and again, right to engine governed RPM if we like. run was done in two-wheel drive only. Again, the transmission is scrolled down right to first gear. We do approximately 20 kilometers an hour at governed engine RPM. The pressure reading at the time was approximately 390 PSI. And in all the videos, you've seen how well that water flow at 60 gallons a minute can literally blow away any potential fire line and lay down protection for anything that you've encountered. Thank you. Have a great day.